Hey everyone, Rachel Prophet here. I'm a white female with long reddish brown hair that's pulled back in a ponytail today. I am wearing an orange t-shirt with a white cami underneath and I'm in my office with my epic sticker wall behind me as usual. Today, I want to dive into how to set up a legal entity in Dynamics 365 for you um, in finance and operations apps. So we're just going to dive right into this um, and I'm going to walk you through the process. Now, if you're just starting with a brand new installation of Dynamics 365, if you choose not to install any demo data, your system will start off with just one company called the DAT company. This is the default data company um, that's provided out of the box when you don't install any demo data. This company doesn't really have a whole lot of setup, but there are a few very, very basic things in this company, but you don't really wanna use this company to start setting up your system and your transactions. You'll always wanna start off by creating a new legal entity. If you did install the demo data, you will see that there is a pretty exhaustive list of a variety of different uh, companies that come out of the box. And my environment has some additional ones that have been created above and beyond those standard ones. So to get started, what we're gonna do is navigate using the left navigation pane, and we're gonna go down and select the organization administration module and then underneath the organization's area, I'm going to click on legal entities. So like I said, this is one of the first things that you will want to do before you start setting up the rest of your system. To create a new legal entity, it's pretty simple. You're just going to click that new icon, which will open up a slider or a uh, toolbar on the right-hand side where you're gonna enter in the details. You're going to need to put in a name, and then in the company field, you're going to want to put in a small, uniquely identifiable code. I'm gonna call this UNBX for unboxed as my abbreviation. The other thing that you'll need to do is to select a country or region. This is actually how uh, the system automatically enables your country and region specific features in each company that you create. So I've chosen USA. Obviously, you can choose whatever country your company exists in. When you're ready, you'll click OK. Now, a couple things to note about what is a legal entity. If you're not familiar with this term, a, another term is a company. Um, when you think about your company, your organization, you want to create one legal entity in Dynamics 365 for each one of your legal companies. So if you have three legal tax IDs, three legal companies, then you would create three legal entities. Um, we always recommend that you match your legal entity structure to your organization's actual legal structure from a tax perspective. When you are setting up your legal entity for the first time, you can put in a memo, which is just like a big description field. There's some other uh, check boxes here where we can indicate if this is used in a hierarchy. Um, you can't actually mark this checkbox. It marks itself automatically once you add this company to an organization hierarchy. We'll talk more about that in a different video later on. There's also checkboxes here for financial consolidation and elimination processes. These two checkboxes enable functionality for your financials that support the ability to run a consolidation or to run an elimination. Oftentimes these are used together, but you might choose to create separate consolidation and separate elimination companies depending on your needs. These financial consolidation and elimination processes checkboxes actually drastically change the functionality of that legal entity, meaning that you can't post any transactions into the system. So uh, you're only going to want to use this for a company that you are planning to consolidate. So you can think of this as like a parent company or a holder company, if you will, 
And with this kind of holder or consolidation company, you can only run the consolidation and or elimination processes respectively based on what you chose. There is a setting here for localized functionality region. The default behavior here is to detect using the company address. So you can see that the system automatically created an address for me and it's using the country region that I selected on that dialog box when I created it. But you can force a particular legal entity to use a specific localization by using the drop down box and selecting the localization for that particular country. If you don't want a legal entity to use a localization, then you can select that none option. I do strongly encourage you to select a language. This will be the default language that's used for this particular legal entity. I've chosen ENUS, which is English US. You can also select the time zone for this particular company. For my example, um, seven, I believe. Yes, mountain time, there I go. Okay, so the next fast tab, and I'm gonna collapse this general tab. The next fast tab that we have here is the addresses, and this is where I can set up and maintain the addresses. It created this default one for me, and if I want to actually put a street address in here, I simply use that edit icon to come in here and put in the zip code, the street, city, and state information. It has been marked as the primary address. You'll also notice that there's an additional flag here for primary for country region. If you have more than one country or region, then you can select that uh, primary country or region. When you're done making those changes, you just click OK. I'm going to collapse that down and we're going to take a look at the rest of these tabs. Now, I don't have hours to go into all of the details of every single one of these, but I'm just going to quickly highlight what some of these things are. So the next tab is my contact information. This is where I can add things like the company phone number, the company email address, and so on. You'll simply use that add icon and type in the details. The next tab here is statutory reporting. This tab is used for different types of statutory reporting and you may be required to enter these numbers depending on what country you're in in order to uh, generate certain types of reports. In general, if you don't know what one of these fields is or what it means, it likely means your country doesn't require this and you don't need to set it up. If one of these fields is required, you'll get an error message when generating that particular report that says this particular field needs to be filled in. Uh, and then you'll need to come back to this screen and update it. There's also a tab full of registration numbers. Typically you won't use all of these and the number of fields that will be enabled will be specific to whatever country or region you've chosen. Since I've chosen uh, USA on my primary country, uh, you'll notice that I don't get uh, very many fields. There is an initial capital field that I can edit. Um, and beyond that, um, there's really not any fields here that are US specific. However, if you're in one of these other countries such as Italy or Norway or Brazil, for example, you will want to fill in these fields based on your registration information with that particular country. Moving on, there's a tab here for bank account information. You can put in default bank account information and we haven't set up any banks yet in our new company so I won't have any bank accounts to pick from. Uh, depending on your localization you might have some of these additional fields that need to be filled in as well. Foreign Trade and Logistics has a bunch of additional fields that are used with foreign trade. Uh, again, many of these fields are country specific. So I'm here in the US, we don't do that. But if I have um, a company in the UK, for example, fill in all of these additional interest stat fields related to my VAT. The next tab is for your number sequences. Now I haven't run the number sequence wizard yet, so there's nothing populated here, and I'll need to go run that wizard. We'll take a look at that in one of our next upcoming vi videos. There's also another tab here of additional registration codes. 
and we can choose what image we would like for the dashboard. This is the home page when you log in. You can choose to use the default, which um, this is that image. Otherwise, you can say that you want no image. You can select that you want a banner, which will be a large image, just like the default one. Or you can upload a small logo, which will appear in the upper left-hand corner. If you choose something other than default um, or none, so if you choose banner or logo, then you'll use the change button to go upload that image. You can also choose the logo that you want to use on reports. Many reports out of the box have the ability to print your company logo, so here you can click the change button and upload that logo. There's also some settings here for print destination defaults. In this company, we can choose if we want to print to screen or print to PDF by default. And then there's three additional tabs here that are all specific to tax. So we have one for tax registration, one for tax 1099, which is a US specific feature, and one for general tax information. Again, all of these fields that are available will be different um, and many of the fields may be grayed out or disabled depending on the country that you chose on your address. Um, if you chose on your general tab to not use the company address and you chose a specific country, the fields that will be enabled there will be specific to whichever localization you chose. So there you have it, legal entities inside and out, every single tab explained. Once you're done creating your legal entity, you can save that record and close down the form. In order to start seeing your company in that drop-down box, you may need to refresh your browser, but now you can use that drop-down box to select your new company. And now that I'm in my unboxed company, I can start setting up all of the rest of the system. If you enjoyed this video or there's something specific you want to hear about, be sure to let me know in the comments, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Dynamics 365 Unboxed.